Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's off meta, we have a season 20 only build that will allow us to make full use of this seasonal artifact mods and make full use of creating tons upon tons of heavy for us and our team. A simple build that anyone can use this season with any characters, you would just need to have the Aeon Swift Gauntlet just to make the support build work in endgame content. Now I've wanted to create something like this for a good while as the Bricks from Beyond mod can prop quite often at the right time, and this here when combined with a fully spec'd out void weapon team means that you can proc it even more harder. This setup is going to enhance that mod effect by 100% but also providing us that massive debuff to targets we are super, the ability to freeze and stun targets with a condition of finality or any stasis weapon, and have a near constant uptime of orbs of power charge just for us and our team. Simple, great, but easily effective. To start, you're going to want to have Vanishing Step, where dodging makes you invisible. Then you'll want Stylus Executioner, where defeating a weakened, volatile, or suppressed effect on a target grants you true sight and invisibility. As the build focus is to support our teammates, the best way to do this is to simply build into the one aspect hunters are best known for, which is going invisible. You do not need anything else on this section, as you should be the one that stays alive the most in your team and the one that should be able to revive your team while they're in the worst spot possible to get. Trapper's ambush aspect can be used as well, although if you do, you will need to spec into your strength stat just a bit so you just have enough to passively get it and progressively get it back over time. For fragments used, Echo Obscurity, where doing a finish on a target makes you invisible, Echo Remnants, where your lingering grenade duration are extended, Echo Cessation, where finished final blows creates a burst of void damage that causes nearby targets to become volatile, and Echo Instability, where getting a grenade kill will grant your void weapon volatile rounds for a few seconds. The Echo Obscurity, Remnants and Cessation are a go-to for the build as we want to make sure our grenades are putting in the work that will grant us back effects to enhance our weapon's damage, but also the ability to inflict even more damage while we go invisible. Both Obscurity and Sea Station are a perfect match for us, as it allows us the ability to not only go invisible, but also the ability to make others near us volatile as well, which can lead to even more invisibility for us when we proc Stylus Executioner. In many ways, it will allow us to create a back-to-back -back constant feed of targets to use our finisher on, go invisible, a debuff, and then repeat as many times as you like, until nothing is left. This overall will play within our exotic gloves effects of supporting our team while staying hidden as much as possible, and this is probably one of the best methods of achieving it. For the mods and stats section, having a high mobility stat along with discipline and strength would be the smart move to do on your end, although both discipline and strength stats don't need to be maxed out. Mobility at tier 8 will help us passively get our class ability back without needing much to invest into real mods. Having just the bolstering detonation mod which will grant us a 20% energy return and distribution giving us a 3.5% energy return to all of our abilities is just the right amount to aim for when using the given class ability at full. Remember, we have 3 ways to go invisible so you don't need to further invest into your class ability as long as you know what you're doing. Discipline will be at tier 7 but actually it will be at tier 10 because of the font of focus mod grant us a plus 30 to our stats. I would recommend you do the same as this is easy to achieve for a lot of players and you don't need to heavily invest into getting good armor with good armor spike rolls just for this cause alone. With a stat at tier 10, the echo instability fragment will be triggering more often depending on the grenades you decide to use and although volatile flow is active via our seasonal mod effect, it's nice to have this fragment available as backup when you can't get auto power going. Now, I will leave the strength stat at tier 5 simply because we won't be using our melee that much, but if you want to get a quick invis via a stylus executioner or even just slow a target down, then you can add on the font of Vigo mod which is the same as font of focus. This will then leave you room to add whatever necessary mods that best fit the build straight after. So charged up and stacks on stacks will make sure that each orb of power collected will be plus 2 instead of 1. Then having the harmonic siphon and shield break charge will allow us to create orbs of power while on the go. I have also added the powerful fence mod so each time we become charged, our team will be charged as well, which is great when you want to coordinate abilities, etc. 
A times 2 Void Weapon Surge mod for a constant 17% weapon damage buff will also help with taking down certain tough targets faster, while we also apply a debuff and volatile rounds all at the same time. The time dilation mods will extend the duration of all time based mods we have to around a 15 second second time, and the ammo finder mods for heavy and special finisher mods for special are both useful when we want to make fully sure that both of these key areas are always stocked up. That should ultimately be it, though you can add or take away what you deem unfit. Now lastly the weapons being used will be a mixture of void primary and heavy that you the user can play around with. As is end game, I will show you my setup but the option for what you want to do is endless. We have the condition of finality as our secondary weapon that I have covered multiple times before and is perfectly used when you are up against multiple tough combatants. Great against champions, tormentors and mini bosses etc. The weapon can make our lives a lot more easier when getting in close and pulling off a finisher to get those heavy ammo drops to spawn more often for our team. If you don't have this then don't worry as the Riptide Fusion is the second best thing to aim for with Chill Clip. As secondary we have the Grid Skipper Void Pulse with multi kill clip on it and this is more for the range side of things while also providing anti-barrier options. Now, not the best for the gear for the weapon, but the damage buffs we apply for the weapon can make it feel like a laser once everything is going for it. On the other hand, I do also use the funnel web with substance and a junkie, which is a perfect match for the following setup when using your grenade a lot. With the ability to get ammo back while getting kills and a 33% weapon buff on top of the current buffs we have, this alone will make taking on any major threats in GMs a lot more easier. Now combining everything we got, we create a walk-in heavy ammo dump that allows players on our team to constantly use their heavy from start to finish with little issues involved. The moment I noticed how bricks from beyond were pockets effect, I wanted to see if we can expand on the idea more so that we can constantly backfill our team with waves upon waves of heavy and special ammo while playing Grand Masters. Although the following activity for most players won't see the use of such a build as they may have completed them without it, I can see this working out really well for those who want to show, teach and guide much newer players who have never done a GM before but want to as simple as possible. Now it won't make doing such a content easier but it will allow the whole of your team to be more at ease when you need heavy ammo urgently for certain scenarios. Outside of the ability to create heavy on the fly, you can debuff groups of target via your super or your finishers, go in vis whenever you desire with ease and ultimately have their highest survivability rate compared to anyone else in the team which is ideal for many of those that want to do nightfalls. However, it doesn't end there though as the build isn't solely for Grand Masters but also anything hardcore for the base activity you do such as Legend Battlegrounds, Master Dungeons and Master Raids. The point being that the build can cover a number of key areas if you intend to use heavy a lot and as long as you meet the following exotic requirements to activate your mods and exotic at hand, you'll get one of the best support hunter builds to use for this season and probably the next. But ultimately, what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire on my YouTube channel. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.